Meditation Master Jin Bodhi's Dharma Teachings Learn to be happy. Happiness is indispensable in one's life. But fast-paced modern life brings everyone various pressures and afflictions. People grow unhappy. Internet friends worldwide through varied means, seek help from Meditation Master Jin Bodhi on how to be happier. Hello Master, I'm 24 years old and very sensitive. I'm very emotionally reactive. I try my best to control my emotions, but when I'm troubled, emotions arise. How can I control my feelings? Sensitive Rabbit Master, why do I have difficulty curbing my temper? Even though I know it's wrong to get angry, I just can't control myself. Afterwards, I regret it. What should I do? Hot-tempered lion. After hearing from our web friends, meditation master Jin Bodhi gave his opinions. Mood swings is related to age. My grandma said my grandpa became mellow after age 76. Before his 75th birthday, he was still hot-tempered. My grandma said she finally had hope of living in peace during their final years. But the change in him scared her as he lost the energy to get angry. She was afraid she would lose. The man who had always raged at her, yet loved her so dearly. At times, showing anger can caution others. Unpleasant things or people or being explosive can warn the other involved. So anger is not always a bad thing. What is anger exactly? We lose our temper. Our original intent is to warn the other, but we end up arguing instead. Some males may even end up physically fighting. That's going overboard. Keeping our emotions in control is a learning process. One who is always angry usually has too much energy. So, if you tend to lose your temper, don't practice qigong. The more you practice, the angry you will be. Second, eat less spicy food less energy replenishing food, such as eggs, many kinds of meat, heat up our system, so eat less. Then you'll have less anger. Prepare some cooling herbal tea. Let me recommend one to you. It's a medicinal herbal tea a special Cantonese product in China. It's a 24 herb cooling tea which tastes a little bitter. Temperamental people should drink this tea. It helps to cool down the internal system. Is drinking this tea an indication of sickness? Losing your temper a lot is a sickness. People with brain blockages should come to meditate. Temperamental people are welcome here. If you come, your family will be happier. Maybe you often argue with your family, but through meditation, you'll become mellow. They'll be very happy. There are problems with frequent anger. Let's summarize. Firstly, too much fire in the body is a sign of youth. Secondly, it's an illness or a lack of wisdom. Blockages in the body create anger which doesn't solve matters. Using anger to solve problems indicates a lack of wisdom. Is there a medication that will develop wisdom? What can we do? 
practice meditation, come here to chant or prostrate. For hot-tempered people, I have a simple solution for you. It takes only a minute to learn. It's prostration. Prostration is good for hot-tempered people. Bow your head, kneel down, and lie face down. And knock your forehead on the floor three times. Prostration is great. I lose my temper less and less. From time to time, you encounter an irritating person. They did something wrong for no good reason, and yet they kept arguing with you. My dear fellow practitioner, don't be angry. Instead, talk things over amicably. Don't argue or fight. For the most part, I don't get angry. Even if the other party stays furious for an hour, I'm like my grandfather. He mellowed when he turned 75. I managed to mellow at 25. The anger was gone. Perhaps my energy had been consumed. Prostration really douses the fire, especially for those who get angry easily. Anger is a kind of illness caused by either excessive energy or a lack of wisdom. Blockages in the brain or insufficient blood circulation when the heart is too weak to pump blood, make the brain function improperly. Such dysfunction causes unwise thinking, so you tend to lose your temper. Most times, it's caused not by a lack of wisdom, but insufficient blood circulation. The result is still lack of wisdom. For such problems, prostration is the solution. It activates the blood circulation from the heart. By knocking your forehead, the blood and oxygen easily reach your head. Especially through my own experience and study of Buddha Dharma, its physical experiences and meditation, I've concluded or discovered that by knocking your forehead against the floor, or even without physically hitting the floor, your wisdom can be awakened. For me, I find myself much wiser now than I was in my youth. I'm no longer slow-witted. I'd also like to highlight another reason for anger, lack of understanding and lack of empathy. I grew up in China, where, in various situations, understanding is appreciated. Understanding is important. Say, you understand me, parents understand their children, teachers understand their students. I assume teachers understand their students as they teach them every day. Teaching children is a profession. They must know them well. Knowing is understanding. When kids are mischievous, parents who don't understand them wonder why they jump on the bed or play with a stone for hours. How fun can that be? It's because they're kids. It's parents' blessing if their child is able to play by himself. If we're understanding, we'll find it reasonable. If we aren't understanding, then whatever our relationship is, we'll create misunderstanding and afflictions. Today, many parents dislike their children and want them to grow up quickly. When the child becomes a teenager, there are new things to disapprove of. What to disapprove of? How about kids surfing the web? Raise your hands, parents, if you disapprove of this. Many parents wonder how to change the child's computer habits. It's simple. First of all, congratulations, your kid's intellect is basically normal. Why do I say this? A mentally challenged child would worry you. The ability to surf the web indicates normal intelligence, being able to use the internet seems like a magical feat. 
The ability to play games indicates above average intelligence. Knowing how to download games or photo edit a beautiful girl onto your chubby mother's picture to create a new picture with a beautiful figure, but still your mom's face. That's a high-tech ability. So when parents learn about their children's skills, they think, though their kids are quite annoying, they are very capable. Thus, I congratulate them. Once you understand them, you'll have no worries. You won't scold them anymore. Learn to guide them. Let me repeat a story of my friend that I've told many times. There was a young mother, and my friend went to visit her. This is what he told me. The younger mother's child immediately served the guest tea or rice. The child was only a few years old. Then bang, he slipped and fell onto the ground and broke the bowl. The mother didn't ask her child if he was hurt. Instead, she yelled, You useless kid! Do you know how much this bowl cost? This is ridiculous. Such a mother, do you think she is right? No, this is quite obvious. But this mother didn't think she's wrong. She said, I just treasure my resources. I live frugally. Her perspective on life is correct. There is no absolute right or wrong way. It all depends on your point of view. If you let a child serve food, wouldn't you worry he might get burnt? If he breaks a bowl, it's lucky if he's not cut. Most mothers, seeing such a thing, would say, Oh dear, it's a blessing he's not hurt. They'd feel grateful. But the mother in my story scolded her child. Her reasoning was that she only had ten bowls. If one broke today, another tomorrow, then in ten days there'd be no bowls to use. That was her calculation. It sounds reasonable. However, I feel this mother shouldn't have scolded her son. Whatever happens, if you see matters through and clearly, you'll avoid losing your temper. Couples who are dating tend to argue. They argue more after marrying. Understanding the other is key. You may have various reasons to argue. The key is whether you understand him. Wherever I go in the world, there are women telling me about their troubles. They ask, Master, how can I fix my problem? Tell me, what is your problem? My husband used to love me very much. But in the last two years, he has changed. Is some spirit haunting your home? No, he's fallen for something else. Fallen for someone else? There must be reason for that. Who is it? Is there a photo? No, he's fallen in love with a computer. Oh my God, what a relief. He'd fallen for a computer, not having an affair. No need to worry then, as he just loves the computer, not someone else, right? It's a computer, not even a female robot. Why are you worried? Does he use a computer at home or outside? At home. That annoys me. Why? Why doesn't he spend more time loving me? I say, you're not the computer. At times, we ask for too much, don't we? In fact, you should be happy. Your husband is at home on the computer. At least he's within view. It's all within your control. First, he's not having an online affair. He's only playing games, right? Or maybe he's watching the news, or cropping a photo, or emailing for business, or working online. You're concerned that he's spending more time on the computer than with you. That's not the way to analyze this problem. You shouldn't worry about it. Why? First, you should be happy that you were married. 
Today, many women are single. Second, though you're not that good looking, your husband is very attractive, right? Third, he went online only after he finished cooking and washing the dishes. However, you went straight to the bedroom without helping. Not many husbands appreciate that kind of wife. It's a blessing that he doesn't run wild. Don't you think so? He needs great fortitude to play games. If he were not dearly in love with you, and for the sake of the children, he'd have gone somewhere else with his laptop. So, understanding brings happiness. You won't be afflicted. So without understanding, you easily lose your temper. Did you attempt to be understanding before you got angry? A person who often loses their temper tends to think others are wrong. They may not be wrong. Perhaps you're the ignorant one. This is the third reason for anger, limited knowledge. Another reason is selfishness. Most people experience gain and loss, which easily leads to mood swings. Think about it. Half of all problems relate to personal gains and losses. Say, your neighbor's house and yours are similar, right? You live in the same neighborhood. Your house may be newer or older, but the quality is similar. Perhaps both income levels are similar too, especially in an ordinary neighborhood. Over many years, all the neighbors live a similar life. Everyone works for a living. But one day, Lady Luck pays a visit to your neighbor. They win the lottery, a multi-million dollar lottery. The cumulative assets of your whole family aren't worth one million. Neighbors congratulate them on their sudden windfall. But some jealous neighbors sneer, saying, how could such an ugly, stupid person win such a huge lottery? Some are so fiercely jealous that they set fire to the lucky house, thinking, since you're so bright, we'll brighten you further with fire. Why did they do that? Jealousy. Why th are they jealous? Because someone got extra money. They didn't get any. That's jealousy. All actions stemming from jealousy are selfish. Those easily agitated by many things lose their temper. Such people are narcissistic and selfish, lacking in compassion and civic consciousness. Excessive selfishness fuels a hot temper. Selfish people tend to find fault with others. Even if others have no fault, you still feel they are in your way. When others are better off than you, you start finding fault with them. You may not be right, particularly if you're temperamental. You may think others' mistakes trigger your anger. But often, you're wrong. Let me tell you, if you're such a type of person, think about it. Does the case describe you? The methods to reduce and avoid anger. 1. Prostration. 2. See through matters and be understanding. 3. Broaden your knowledge. 4. 
Cultivate unconditional love. How can you overcome a bad temper? It may not be easy, but let me try to advise you. First, I mentioned earlier the issue of excess of energy, right? You may have too much energy. If that is the case, actually, I praise you, you have the restless energy of youth. It's stronger than that of older folks. But some fail to turn the energy into brain power. Instead, they use their mouth to blame and scold others. Their energy is used for the wrong purpose. Second, what is the second problem? It is lack of wisdom. In some cases, the brain is compressed by the skull. Some people's skulls are too small, so the brain doesn't have sufficient space to function well. Brain function may be reduced or even blocked. Imagine the brain as a hundred strings that are unobstructed, transmitting energy and messages. But some strings may be blocked or the energy is unable to flow freely. It's like the inside of a water pipe. Often a thick layer of rust develops inside the pipe so that when you turn on the tap, only a little water flows out. If you have such a brain blockage, your intelligence will be limited. As for the problem of limited knowledge, in fact, we need a learning process. Learn to understand others. Learn a bit of psychology. Humans all have similar problems. Much of human behavior is reasonable, but at times you may not see your own flaws, just those of others. Learn something about compassion and universal love. If you're with a sage, you'll experience the awakening of wisdom. Conversely, if you meet an ordinary person, you'll merely learn their perspective. I hope you'll have the opportunity to learn from some great ancient philosophers, and today's as well. If you can't find any great masters, come and find me, a teacher of less eminence. Come and listen, you may get inspired. What I teach is applicable to daily life and is easy to learn. Be compassionate and forgiving. If you do, unexpected gain arises. After coming here, many experience gains. After a month of learning, almost everyone's anger diminishes. There's a decrease in the number of angry outbursts. Do you agree? Indeed, this is especially so for women. This reminds me of a Hong Kong movie called Kung Fu Hustle, which depicts human nature. In the movie, one of the characters a landlady had an ability called the Roar of Lions. Whenever she hollered, everyone ran away. She symbolizes a nagging woman. Nagging is like brandishing an invisible sword at someone. So be careful when you express yourself. Also, learn to do more good deeds without any expectation of reward. Help those in need, the weak, and the begging medicants. When you see someone in trouble, if possible, help them. Compassionate acts change your fundamental way of thinking. In the past, the old, familiar you always expected to be served. Only then did you feel happy. You can change. 
be selfless, help others unconditionally. Start now. Just do it. You may receive a reward. For myself, when I help someone, I feel happy and comfortable. I assume you feel this way too, don't you? In Bodhi meditation, almost everyone helps others. After helping others, we feel happy. After hearing me say this, some narrow-minded people will start to help others. After helping, they'll come to me. Why didn't I get happiness and other gains? Helping others takes a long time to render a result. The key is what you gain. Is it suffering or ease and joy? Don't look at others' attitude. The key is what you get in your innermost self if you always help others. Prostrate, meditate, and care for others. Your body will be at ease and relaxed. The phrase at ease in Mandarin is a special term. It's a feeling of relaxation, serenity, ease, and harmony. The best feeling of being one with the universe. Such mental state is what we call being at ease. If your body's internal circulation is smooth, you won't have any obstructions. If your heart is unobstructed, the blood flow will be normal. Then your brain will be fully functional. Without brain obstructions, with normal blood flow and adequate supply of oxygen, you don't need to develop wisdom because your brain is already wise. If you meditate frequently, you'll develop greater wisdom. I mentioned multiple aspects of development. So to learn to help others, just start. If you get angry for no reason and later regret it, try to reflect on your behavior and avoid doing things you'll regret. When you feel anger arising, remember this. Put yourself in the other's shoes. If you think someone is wrong and you're right, think to yourself, what if I were in his position? There was a disciple in Hong Kong who said, Master, I'm very angry. Why? I hired a foreign domestic helper to cook our meals because we were so busy at work. We have a very expensive brand name frying pan. The helper worked hard. In fact, she worked so hard scrubbing my pan, that she scrubbed away half its value. She damaged the pan by scrubbing it with a steel pad. My bright, shiny pan was scratched. The scratches were so deep that I could feel the roughness. She felt very upset over the damaged pan. She'd wanted to tell the worker, I hired you to work, but all you've done is cause damage. Look at how you scrubbed my pan. It's as if you scrubbed my heart. I'm in excruciating pain. I asked her, what do you want to do? I'll fire her. I don't want her anymore. I replied, then you'll have to wash your own pans. I don't have time. That won't work. I'll get a new worker. I said, the new one might scrub your face while you sleep or scratch other household objects. You should let this helper know she didn't scrub the pan properly. She said, I thought she knew. I said, she comes from an underdeveloped place. The only electronics in the village are electric lights. She's poor and has seen nothing of the world. When she arrived at their place, she had to learn using the toilet and was constipated for three days. She was not used to it. It was all new to her, right? Yet she worked hard. Let it be, just buy a few more pans as backup in the future. Also, as I always said that bowls, plates, pans and pots are considered good kitchenware, 
if they are durable and can withstand scrubbing. Don't buy extremely expensive ones in case you damage them. If you ask a helper to scrub, expect there to be damage. If you lose your temper, you'll regret it later. So learn to control your temper. Don't do things you'll regret. Losing your temper is harmful. Once you've hurt someone, it's like that scratched pot. You may apologize or compensate for any damage, but the scratches remain. What's done can't be undone, right? Especially porcelain bowls. Once they break, however much glue you use to piece it together, the cracks will always be there. Indeed, once the damage is done, an apology is like the glue, and the scars remain. If not fixed properly, it may cause damage. So don't lose your temper so easily. When emotions flare, put yourself in the other's shoes. What if you were them? She wasn't used to modern life, so it's normal to make a mistake. Everyone here, in whatever situation, needs to stand in others' shoes and think from their perspective. This can solve half of all problems. Once you understand others, you become more tolerant. That's what happens. Perhaps the other person went too far. If he intentionally made such a mistake, blame her. But even if he was your own brother, your own sister, or your own child, would you do everything as you wished? That's impossible. Even within your own family, you still damage things, right? Perhaps the word damage is too strong because they are all minor hurts, right? All these minor hurts don't seem to create major pain and suffering. If you still live together, it's because of tolerance that comes with love. If it's not your family, you can't take it. If it was your husband, you might not have gotten that angry. If it had been your children, you might have gotten even less angry. If you damage the pan, you'd blame the pan and yourself for buying such an expensive pan, right? Or you'd blame the person who bought the pan. So, with understanding, you can calm your emotions. However understanding you can be, if you still lose your temper, you can still take control of yourself. I'll tell you a secret, a mantra. Do you want to hear it? Yes. The mantra is to count one, two, three, and then walk away before you explode. Run! Go somewhere that's relaxing, like a park or a restaurant. Have some food and you'll calm down. If you happen to be about to explode at the moment you're hungry, your anger will be worse. Things become easier after eating. A hungry man is an angry man. Without food in the stomach, the brain lacks blood and oxygen, and the rational becomes irrational. In addition, every month, women experience menstruation. Those days can be challenging. An elderly disciple told me that during those particular days, he was the most hardworking and the sweetest, even sweeter than during courtship. I asked him if his wife believed his honeyed words. He said yes. She was exceptionally happy to hear them and thought he adored her. I've said too much. But I haven't revealed who said that. Don't worry, you're still safe. <laughs> I feel this example reflects reality. So, leave the area of danger to think and reflect. Your anger will abate. The angry you will become much calmer. If you want to make me happy, just take me out for a meal. What I've said isn't a mantra, it's just my own belief. The methods of solving your emotional problems. 1. Be compassionate and forgiving to others. 2. 
Do selfless good deeds to help others. Three, put yourself in others' shoes. Four, change your environment. Hello, Master. I saw people do some destructive things. I detest these people. If one lives in such a negative emotion daily, Master, is it an uncompassionate act? How can I walk out of such mentality? From righteous calf. People who anger this way have yet to reach a certain level of cultivation. Once they have cultivated to a certain extent, whatever they see becomes pleasing to the eye. Remember my grandfather, age 76? Began to see everything as pleasing to his eye? In China, a grand meditation master from the Song Dynasty summarized people's feelings. From the beginning to the end point, where you gain a bit of enlightenment, he concluded about it. At first, you see a mountain as a mountain and water as water. As you progress in your practice, you see a mountain not as a mountain and water not as water. After you complete your practice, you again see a mountain as a mountain and water as water. His words almost gave me a mental breakdown. When he said that at first we see a mountain as a mountain, it seemed obvious. It's not a bun. That's impossible. Is it a piece of wood? No, it's not. When we start to practice, to meditate, we begin to see that the mountain is not a mountain. The mountain appears to be breathing, or walking, or it's a bun. Things are confusing and mixed up. Until at last, when you're enlightened, then you'll find mountain is a mountain and water is water. What is this called? It is called back to the original true nature. Let's talk about the economic situation of some people. When you are poor, you eat ordinary food and strive. Telling yourself that once you strike it rich, though you don't know what the rich eat, you'll eat the most expensive, most delicious foods every day. As you become a bit wealthier, you will start to binge, eating lots of expensive food. But after eating like this for a while, you'll find you don't like the food and your body will suffer from overeating. If you continue eating that way, you might die. The doctor will then tell you to eat basic bread, basic buns, the simplest congee, some salted vegetables, and more greens. These are the healthiest and most nourishing. At this time, you're rich, and you've eaten and wasted whatever you wanted, only then do you realize the food you ate when you were young and poor is the best food for your health. In the end, you are back to the beginning, back to simple meals and a peaceful lifestyle. That's the healthiest way to live. So, when you see something, that makes you unhappy and you get agitated, all this proves is that you're so-called righteous. But it also proves you lack self-control. Can I say this? Yes. If you want to change somebody, first, change your own temper. When I was younger, I thought about this. I don't know where I got the determination, but I wanted to change the world. I eventually realized I can't change the world, but the world is changing me so that I can be one with it. I also realized once I comply with the world, I had no anger even when it was appropriate. I had less anger. 
Only then did I slowly get used to this world. At first, I was frustrated with the world. Let's take driving as an example. This is from my personal life. When I pulled into the road, there's a traffic jam. I was on a downward slope and accidentally killed the engine. When I started the engine, the car surged forward. I killed the engine again, and the car came to a stop. Then I didn't complain about my inability. Instead, about the designer of that stupid car. First, I complained about the car's poor design. Second, those who build the roads. Couldn't they have built a flat road? Why did they create a hill? I was embarrassed. I couldn't go forwards or backwards. I couldn't abandon the car and run away, because it was somebody else's car. I still had a sense of responsibility. Now I realize the actual problem was I couldn't drive well. I couldn't blame anyone else. I could only blame myself for my lack of driving skills. When I was younger and in a hurry, I hated coming to a red light. When I got on the road, the traffic light would turn red. It seemed that the more anxious and in a hurry I was, the longer the light stayed red. As I waited, I'd count 30 seconds. Then again, why hasn't it turned green? I was so angry that I blamed other people. Now the fire and smoke within me is extinguished. Now I think it's all my own fault. Why was I in such a hurry? Once, when I was driving normally, a teenager looked at me. And his expression was saying, Old man, can you drive as fast as me? I drove at my normal pace. When I reached the suburbs, it was dark and getting less streetlights. Suddenly I heard a loud crash. I pulled over and saw it was a teenager with attitude. I didn't show any expression but called the police and helped him get out of the car. He could still talk. Thank you, sir. Haha, <laughs> 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 will you ever drive crazy again? I thought these unpleasant words silently. I still had to comfort him. You're lucky that you can still talk. I saved several who couldn't talk after being pulled out. He was happy upon hearing my words. Later, we became friends. We always blame others for being unreasonable. It's their fault. Now we realize we're wrong. I'm not sure if your problems are similar to mine. I shared my experience with you. We should learn to accept the world. One sentence may be unreasonable. Existence, please pay attention to me, is reasonable. Existence is reasonable. That sentence itself is irrational. Existence of theft or divorce is reasonable. How many people have got hurt by divorce? It hurts here, bleeding in the heart, right? I asked a divorce guy, sorry, a man in his 30s. Your ex-wife is very nice and good-looking. Her income is higher than yours. It's hard for others to find such a wife, not only good-looking and also with a high income. He said, she looks nice to others. Everyone else thinks so, but when you live with her, when she explodes, it's like your life is ending. She brandished a knife. Look at the scar on my hand. I saw it's a real scar. I asked, your words are true? Yes. Why would I lie? Is such a divorce reasonable? It's very reasonable. You'd better leave Vancouver and move to another place where she can't find you. Otherwise, she'll look for you and may kill you. I not only agree with him getting divorced, but also with him moving to a new country or back to his motherland. Thus, don't hope to change the world. Don't hope to change other people. Change yourself. If you want to change the world and others, first start with yourself.
To master Jin Bodhi, I'm always hesitant. I overanalyze. I worry a lot. Master, how can I change myself? From sentimental cat. All these problems are similar. When executing tasks and dealing with problems, many people are indecisive and hesitant. It seems we will often judge and compare. When we do that too much, we're unable to use a firmer, more resolute approach in problem solving. This applies on a case-by-case -case basis. Some matters need to be dealt with. Say, I have a particularly brilliant student who stutters when he speaks. He went for a drive with his father. They drove into a mountainous region at night. Suddenly, a car drove toward them. He had to reverse. The road was very narrow and dangerous. His father said, Son, get out and guide me. My disciple stuttered as he spoke. Backwards, backwards. In a second, the car tumbled down. Luckily, a tree cushioned him from falling to his death. Once he climbed to the road, he slapped his son. Why did you keep saying backwards? He said, I try to say not backwards, but while I was saying backwards, you and the car were already gone. So be decisive whenever you need to be. When there is no need to be decisive, then let things be. Say, regarding divorce, when the other party initiates the divorce, don't agree right away. Instead, be gentle and take some time. Consider the problems of marriage. When someone proposes marriage, don't agree too quickly. And don't be wooed too easily. Don't give your hand too hastily. Okay? This allows time for consideration. What if there's a better one? I once taught a retreat in New York. A practitioner said, Master, you've been teaching all the time. I'll take you sightseeing in New York. Great, I lucked out with this talented disciple who had a PhD. He drove and I felt very blessed. Initially, I was sleepy, but eventually I was more excited than he was. The ride was so scary for me. While driving over a high bridge, he held his phone with one hand and steered with the other. I was caught in a swerving frenzy. Another sword would have sent me flying out the window. I was shocked to the core. I questioned my composure, my practice, and wondered how I became a master. I firmly held onto the dashboard. As the seatbelt seemed not secure enough, then I was trying to comfort him. Calm down, calm down, can you chant? He replied, I drive just as fast while chanting. He was firm about this. But at 2 p.m., we still had found a restaurant. Even though there were many, he still kept mulling it over. Master, shall I take you for Chinese or Western cuisine? When we finally picked a restaurant, it was 3 p.m. already. We had driven around for two hours and finally ended up at McDonald's. All because of his indecisiveness. Be decisive when you need to be. The same goes for the backwards car accident. When it comes to food, many people think about what they will have for dinner. Many people spend hours discussing what to eat, like from 5 to 8.30 p.m. Finally, they just eat leftover rice at home. This is their ultimate solution. Don't hesitate over such a small issue. Also, we need to know our direction. 
First, we have to understand our purpose. Next, decide what to do. Then things become easy. Instead of asking whether I prefer Chinese or Western, this indecisiveness causes everyone to be famished. Starvation can turn an elegant person into a warrior. Nevertheless, I'm wholeheartedly grateful for America's fast food. <laughs> Usually, after we are indecisive about what to eat, we end up at McDonald's so we can grab fast food. It's really not bad. But sometimes, many choices arise because of your privileged life. This morning, several young practitioners discussed this issue with me. A beautiful young girl showing her phone Master, please help me choose someone. For what? Mm, how about this one? Mm, is he a superstar? He's no superstar. He just likes me. This one is good looking. Look, there are four or five boys. Master, please choose one. I'm not the one looking for a partner. Yet, I was asked to choose for her while we were having a meeting. In the end, I chose all five boys, as they all looked pleasant. They're all quite handsome. You'd be moved at the sight of them. Before I reached a decision, a long-time disciple and bachelorette, who was sitting next to me said, You asked Master to choose? If it were my choice, I'd just grab the first one that came by and cherish him. You have four choices and you can't decide. When Master chose one, you disagreed and still wanted to check out the remaining three. If you want my advice, Pick one and be content. What other choices do you have? You should feel grateful for having so many choices. So when you have so many choices, the better they are, the tougher your decision. Which one is more suitable? Actually, I don't know which one. Just choose one. That will do then your depression will disappear. Otherwise, for the rest of the year, you'll suffer heartbreak. In the end, you still can't decide. We should learn to feel whether it's good or bad to be with this person. If you feel good with the others, that won't work because you have one already. Please keep that in mind. People on this side disagree. <laughs> Though sitting in this area might have question, especially for those who are already married. If you have a partner and fall for a second or third one, please let go of them. Settle your heart. If you already have one, be content. The people sitting in this area answered very hesitantly, you have too many options, too many choices can lead to harm and make one depressed. Those people have no choice will grab the first opportunity. This is far more precious. My answers end here. When making choices, be decisive so as to reach the ultimate goal. <laughs>